Africans, particularly that they are violent people. No, 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 shut up, shut up. No, shut up, me, number one, number two, number three. You know be anybody. It can't even behave, uh, village behavior, come here. Me, Nabush, man. Me, Nabush, man. Hey, everybody, come on. Come on, let me show this man. Shut up, man. On your butt. See your butt. Money, you don't get money. Money don't craze your hair. Well, Gossip Nation is showing at this year's Indie Gems Festival. Its writer and producer, Daniel Okadua, joins us now in the studio. Daniel Okadua, thank you so much for speaking thank to us on The much. World. Thank you for inviting me. Now, the film yeah. follows a community of African immigrants and refugees. Yeah. That they've settled in Blacktown. Mm. What kind of challenges do they face, the people in your film? Mm. Oh, well, the people in my film, like, uh, like every other new immigrants, face cultural, uh, uh, how would I call it, cultural problems. Because coming from Africa with a, a different culture and then to Australia, as completely uh, a different uh, scenario. And um, naturally, it take a bit of time for them to fit in. And in that process, a lot of drama do, does happen. Uh, break up of relationships, break up of marriages, because people uh, tend not to properly understand the Australian culture or some other people taking advantage of the Australian culture and things that would have been sorted out uh, amicably or differently in Africa get sorted out differently here. So, so many other challenges, but we, we don't have enough time to go through them. Okay, so, so what are the real events that the film is based on? Uh, some time ago in the community, there were a lot of... Uh, talks out there, here and there. You know, people like to hear stories from the grapevine without... Um, so gossip? Gossip. You know, like every other community, I've been told it's not just the African community, but I wanted to write something from our uh, culture, from our own point of view. And I thought this would make a very good, uh, interesting uh, subject. So I decided to write a film based on gossip and just say, be careful, you know, words can be very dangerous. They can be, made, they can be for good, but they can also be for destruction. So be careful how you use your words. That's why the film was made. What kind of reaction have you had to the film? Very encouraging, being that um, for me, this is like a movement, you know, like I'll go back to history again. When I first came, the African community was probably non-existent. It was just a few expatriates out there, here and there. And you came in 2000? I 2000, it was the beginning of 2000. And uh, not too long, refugees started coming in from Liberia, Sierra Leone, Sudan and all, and the community kind of uh, became big. So it was a movement for me. I thought, oh, there's so many talented African artists out there. We should do something. We should contribute to the Australian culture, culturally, because we are good at sports and movies and music and all that. We should kind of take advantage of this beautiful country and the promises that it, uh, that it offers. So I started making films. So over the years, the people have come to understand that I make films. My first films were very, you know, beginning film, uh, or would I, uh, a beginner's film. When it got to Gossip Nation, they were proud of it and they embraced it and they've promoted it and they've supported it. So you've been here since 2000. When did you start to make films? Before you uh, arrived? Before I arrived, I was uh, a lover of film. A lover of film. Of film. <laughs> I, I was, since I was a kid, I remember going to theatres where I was still a kid, maybe nine years old. I would sweep the film theatres so they can let me in, but they always let me in 10 minutes to the end of the film. And because I wanted to be a filmmaker, I was so interested in film. Somehow music came around. I started doing music. But when I came to Australia, uh, I joined a casting agency. And um, I was uh, one time my favorite film of all time, The Matrix. <laughs> I was asked to uh, come work as an extra and as a background actor. Uh, which I did for like three months. So uh, that was when Matrix was filmed, part of it was filmed in Australia. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the funny thing is that when I was coming to Australia, I actually watched it on the plane, the first <laughs> one. And I thought, oh, I would love to do something like this. And when I came, I was invited to participate in the two and three. You know, as a, you, you won't see me there because I was just in the crowd fighting, you know, as a soldier. And I thought, I want to make films. So that's where I developed. And then 2004, my first film, Death is a Diamond, was made. It was made out of the crisis in Africa caused by uh, uh, blood diamonds. Yeah. 
So, so as you know, there's been a lot of discussion, uh, particularly in the lead up to the election campaign and since, about stopping the boats mm. and the whole issue of asylum seekers coming to Australia. Yeah. I wonder, from your point of view, how does that kind of talk affect newly arrived migrants? Uh, psychologically, it will affect them. They, will, they feel they're not part of the community. It's a very, uh, it is very uh, controversial issue. Because sometimes, how I would like to be fair, I like to put myself in the uh, seat of the government as well. Ask myself, if I was the government, what would I do? But no government would want invaders, kind of, let me use that word. I'm not saying they're invading, but at the same time, we must be very careful because this is very, this is a humanitarian problem. These people are running away from crisis. So how do we stay in the, in the, in the how do we balance it up so as to look human? Well, we're still human at the same time, protect the territory of Australia. Did you so people, free a crisis to come here? Uh, when I was back home, I was, the country was still under military regimes and things were collapsing, things were getting that good. So I wasn't happy with the system. I wasn't happy with the system. I wasn't, there was no future. There was no future for the youth. A lot of people were leaving. And, you know, so I thought maybe I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a singer. I already started singing at home. But I thought this environment would be. So in a way, I kind of played a crisis. Because in the presence of our lack of democracy, in such an environment, you can't really uh, progress or blossom properly. Daniel Okadua, we really appreciate you coming here and speaking to us. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. A big clean-up is continuing in Hawaii after an unusual in